Hello, my most divine followers, and welcome back to the Celestial Perch. Today I have a new video. This one will be not so much a basic build, but more of a multiplayer focused build. The build itself won't necessarily be a top tier contender within tournaments. It's just that I will take time to briefly reflect on tournament rule sets and kind of mention that. And a lot of the decisions that we make within this will be kind of hinged on more of that tournament or sort of competitive multiplayer scene. So comparatively with the basic builds, we're focusing a little bit more on Grand Admiral play. This one will focus on more against players that are actual humans. We will dive into the build here shortly, go over all of the kind of facets within the build, general strategies, and of course go over the game details briefly, and then year zero, year 15, and year 30 plus. And we'll try to get kind of a good idea of how the build works and what the goals will be. In other news, I've also set up the Discord, so if you're interested, please pop in, say hello to your fellow acolytes, maybe look at setting up a game. And I'm still setting up the Discord, trying to make it a bit better, so if you have any recommendations or just ideas, feel free to either message me there or leave a comment here. But without further ado, let's jump into the build. So looking at the build overall, I'm not going to dive too much into every detail here, simply because a lot of the tournament play or standard multiplayer builds that you see We'll have a lot of the same stuff. I'm not going to dive too much into the species traits, into the government. A lot of that is just kind of standardized, or at least will have very little difference between builds. So you'll see lots of oligarchic governments. You'll see lots of species that will take unruly, deviants, intelligent or rapid breeders, natural engineers or natural sociologists, charismatic, and also sometimes rapid breeders can be swapped there. A lot of the times the species will look very, very similar. For this build, what I'm going to go over mostly will just be our civics and ethics, and then also discuss the origin, as that's obviously in integral to the build. And to start it off, we'll actually look at the origin first, as it kind of is important to understand the goal of the build, and a lot of the ethics and civics will make a bit more sense once we have an idea of just the overall goal. So the Remnant's origin will start us with a Relic World size 22 as our home world, and we have the option within the decisions to restore it to an eco humanopolis Now to do this, we need to clear all the blockers. We need to have 20,000 minerals, 200 influence, and spend 10 years actually restoring it. Once we do, we get the eco humanopolis and that has a huge benefit, which listed here on the screen, will give us just benefits to our job output as well as pop growth speed, and overall having access to that and the unique districts which it provides can be an immense bonus, especially if you're able to get it as early as we're trying to do with this build. But going back over and looking at our civics, first one we've taken is mining guilds. This is not one you commonly see within single player or multiplayer. It's rather boring, but it does provide us with extra minerals which we need to not only restore our eco monopolis, but also maintain standard development of our capital and our two guaranteed habitable colonies. As well, we've taken technocracy. This will give us extra research alternatives and give our scientists twice as high of a chance to discover a technology that falls within their field. This is especially important as we need the anti-grav engineering technology to be able to actually restore the Eagle Monopolis and that is a tier three tech. We'll go into that later but it is an important aspect of the build. So taking technocracy, as well as just getting the extra science from the science directors is critical. And the last thing to look at would be our ethics. We've taken authoritarian, pacifist, and materialist. Looking at authoritarian first, we get both the stratified economy living standards, the ability to enslave aliens, as well, we get the information quarantine edict, which will net us some extra stability within the early game. And we also get some extra influence, which will help us find critical systems, and some extra worker pop resource output, netting us just a small amount of extra minerals from our mining guild's civic. As well, we've taken pacifist, not something you commonly see, but we have workarounds for this, and we're trying to take advantage of just the early game economy benefits being the extra five stability we get from pacifist baseline, as well as they also have a very powerful edict being the peace festivals, which will give us 10% happiness to all of our pops, which will equate to just extra stability. And being able to stack all of those stability benefits means we get extra resources from jobs, and that can be extremely beneficial in the early game or just at any point in the game. 
Lastly, of course, we've taken materialist. This will allow us another alternative living standard being academic privilege, netting us some extra tech if we feel we need it, as well as just some extra research speed and it's required for technocracy. So it's important that we take materialist to actually get access to this civic. But this is the build overall, the main goal being to try to rush down our eco monopolis as soon as possible and set up a solid economy and continue to develop. And eventually we will transition into, I wouldn't necessarily say aggressive playstyles, but we will go over that once we go over the year zero start and see how this build will actually seek to expand and develop and be kind of a more of a actual galactic player. So now looking at the game details, this is going to be another major deviation from the basic builds. Whereas on the basic builds, we played versus the Grand Admiral AI and tried to get to a point where we were able to contest them. This will be more so focused on just trying to master and get our basic multiplayer build order as fine tuned as we possibly can so that when we take it into a multiplayer game or a tournament, we have a good idea of what to go for, what to build, and you're not too flustered with just basic economy management. As the AI will not play along with your multiplayer rule sets or your tournament rule sets, so it's best to just leave them off and simply practice your economy, early game tech management, leader management, and other necessary skills that you'll need within the multiplayer or tournament scene. We can go ahead and get started and look at our year zero start. So with any year zero start, let's go ahead, press begin, get a good idea of our starting area, look around, see what we're working with here. And of course, just look at our, or our leader here, pretty solid, grow economy is nice, architectural sense is great, and home in the sky is fine. Of course, we just want to start with the leader, and then next we'll just go ahead and look at the market. Looking at the market, we want to get a few minerals set up. We can also sell our food and also get us some alloys. I have to about 13 and use those to get our colony ships produced. If you start running a deficit, you can of course just change the max buy price to one and leave it as is. That will uh, kind of reset it and then allow you to keep it up here so that you can just constantly change between one upkeep or no max buy. And that should be it for the market for now. Of course, we'll just see how we're doing once we go back into the actual unpaused, but for now, that's fine. For diplomatic stance, this is going to be a bit different, I would say, than most people. I'm going to leave this as is. A lot of people would recommend going to isolationist, and I've recommended going to isolationist before in the past quite a bit. For this and for multiplayer, at least for this build, I'm going to recommend staying in expansionist. It's going to save us some alloys and it's going to get our colonies developed just a bit quicker. It's not exactly a, an immensely powerful bonus, it's just saving on alloys is important. And having extra alloys in the early game will mean we can get our colony ships out just that sooner. And we can also save on our actual star bases so that we have extra alloys to upgrade them and build our hydroponics base. So for now we'll keep it actually as expansionist but we can still change our economic policy to civilian. And that should be it for now. In terms of edicts, we didn't get charismatic. So for now, we will probably just activate either peace festivals or information quarantine. You can mess around with that and see which one benefits you more. Generally, peace festivals might get you one or two more stability out of it. So I would roll with that one. For society management, we're going to want to pick up a one point into domination once it's available to get the clear blocker. And then we will pick up discovery and get the opener for discovery as well as the research alternatives. After that, it's up to you to decide how much unity you're going to focus on and how quickly you want to get through these. It also depends on your multiplayer rule set. If the rule set's been pushed out maybe to th year 35 for full on wars, then you could maybe try to finish out Discovery and save Supremacy for later. If you're worried about your Unity production, and maybe you can't balance it, then open Domination, get the Research Alternative within Discovery, and then finish out Supremacy. But that should be it for that. We will save Technology for now and go over that last, as it is the most complex thing here, and will take a bit more time to go over. 
for our leaders, for the governor. We, that's very nice. We found, we found an environmental engineer and an intellectual governor. If we can, we'd pick up both of these, but for now, we'll pick up the environmental engineer and we'll go over in a second. And for our scientists, we found a particles leader, which is pretty good. We also have a material scientist, which will be nice to help us find holographic casts. But for now, we actually want to find an industry scientist that will help us get anti-grav engineering, which we need to restore our eco monopolis. And speaking of, for the last major thing to go over before we touch on tech, will be our capital world. And as mentioned before, we want the environmental engineer governor, as well as the point in domination, to reduce the cost to clear all of these planetary features, as we will need to clear all of them the industrial wastelands, the sprawling slums, and all of the ruined arcology before we can even consider clearing the eco monopolis Now, upon clearing the ruined ar arcologies, we will also get some relics, which will help us with our economy, as well as it will give us some tier one technologies. In terms of our actual development for the capital, I like to start with about two to three mining districts and around maybe mining district two we can replace the commercial zones with tech and then focus on these two building slots with tech as well and as soon as we're able to get the hydroponics bays we want to destroy our agricultural districts re-employ them as miners and just focus primarily on getting the most out of our miners that we can as well at the start we can deprioritize the clerk job so that all of our regular energy, mineral, and food jobs are full. Now, the last two things to go over, first one being our tech, which will take a bit of time. And then after that, I will briefly touch on, you know, we're playing a pacifist empire. So what is our goal around year 35, year 50, when we can start waging actual wars and trying to conquer our neighbors? But first, let's look at our tech. And this is important. For our physics and society research, not much to say here. Just pick techs that will help us develop our economy. I love getting hydroponics farming, so I'll pick that up. But for engineering, this is the important one. As mentioned before, we want to find an industry engineer. This will allow us to find anti-grav engineering a bit sooner. And in addition to that, the way the Stellaris tech tree works is that since anti-grav engineering is a tier three tech, we need to get to tier three. We start, of course, at tier one. And to get to tier 2, we need 6 tier 1 technologies. And likewise, to get to tier 3, we need 6 tier 2 technologies. Along the way, we want to pick up techs that will reduce the amount of tier 3 technologies that we see. So that then as soon as we have tier 3 available to us, there aren't very many of them, and we have a higher chance of seeing anti-grav engineering. So I'm going to put up those techs that we want to look for on the screen now. And go ahead when you're playing the game, bring up the tech tree and just look through and find an optimal path for you. For now, we'll just pick the geothermal fracking tech. It's a good industry tech that will just help our miners and we're going to have a lot of those. So it's great to get that early. The last thing to go over is just what is our plan? And our plan, of course, beyond just restoring the eco monopolis and getting a solid economy is we still plan on getting supremacy completed. We still plan on getting large fleets it's just we have two options available to us after that. The first one are wars of ideology with nihilistic acquisition. In multiplayer, this is kind of fun, you can wage an ideological war on somebody as most people will probably not be pacifist. So it'll be very easy to wage those wars and it disincentivizes instantly surrendering as although we cannot claim planets as a defensive war pacifist, we at least can impose ideological wars and if they surrender, that means they will automatically swap to our ideology, so they will become pacifist, authoritarian materialists, which they might not want to do. In addition, we will take nihilistic acquisition. This will allow us to steal pops if we're winning the war. And the other alternative, if maybe the person you believe would be more willing to actually, you know, maybe they wouldn't mind swapping to those ethics, we can of course still attempt to subjugate people and get benefits from tributaries. So there are two alternatives here. Both of them, we can make use of the nihilistic acquisition ascension perk. This will allow us to steal pops from our neighbors and relocate them on our eco monopolis. It doesn't necessarily matter what species traits they have, as we can just put them on the eco monopolis and they will have 100% habitability and they'll be able to work a job. As well, we can make them slaves since we went authoritarian. But that's the general gist of the build, how we're going to play it. 
and how we plan to rush down specific techs, as well as build the necessary economy to get the Eco Monopolis early. But we'll check back in roughly around year 15, or when I think a check-in will make the most sense, but we'll see how we're doing. Oh, one last thing I forgot to mention before we proceed onward is that we do have both authoritarian and materialist, so we have the academic privilege as well as the stratified economy living standards. How we're going to make use of that is at the start of the game, we can change to academic privilege. This will get us some extra tech and help us get through those techs earlier and see anti-grav sooner, hopefully. And then as well, as soon as we switch over our economy from civilian to militarized, we can change from academic to stratified, and that will save us a lot of consumer goods and will help reduce that consumer good burden when we switch, as well as keep our militarized economy going a lot longer. Hello everybody and welcome back. Just checking in at year 26 instead of year 15 or 30. I've decided to kind of combine it. As this is the year I was able to get the Eco Monopolis ready for production. And just as a quick aside, I made some slight mistakes here. I should have had a little bit more bulk sell off of my consumer goods earlier. So I could have had this probably more so around year 24 to 25. And that's what you should generally speaking shoot for so that then it's ready by your 35 for you to start going to war and just be ready for you in general. When you're stealing pops, you can bring them back to the eco monopolis But as we see here with the decision, we are able to restore it with the 20,000 minerals. You should easily have 200 influence at this point and it will just take 10 years. Beyond this, there is one other thing I would like to mention. Our tech is fine. We were able to get, of course, the anti-grav engineering and then right after you can start picking up other techs that you need like destroyers star holds holographic casts space torpedoes and start transitioning back into something that will be a fighting force by year 35. keep in mind that we do not have very many consumer goods i slightly behind my mineral production so i had to sell some off was around i think i was around more like four thousand. but generally speaking my actual recommendation would probably be instead of academic privilege i really didn't lack too much in tech i was able to get around 500 by year 26 so we should be able to hit the anti-grav without using the academic privilege and you actually might just want to depending on your playstyle and depending on your setup you stratified instead so that you have a larger stockpile of consumer goods and can hopefully hit somewhere around the 8 to 11,000 range but beyond that, the rest of the build is pretty simplistic. We're just going to restore our eco monopolis, build up a relatively powerful economy, and then transition that into attacking our immediate neighbors using our nihilistic acquisition, plus either subjugation or some degree of ideological enforcement. Those two will allow us to rest more effective war goals that people would not want to surrender to since we cannot offensively claim while simultaneously being able to build up our population through stealing pops. Aside from that, that's the entire build. Let me know if you guys have any adjustments, questions, concerns, or just other ideas for future builds. I'm going to be working on both a clone army build and an inward perfection build next. So tune in, we should hopefully have it here soon, but thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and I hope you have a blessed day.